Dear guests, let us welcome you to today's uh, international discussions. This is a continuation of the International Conference Global Crisis, uh, Time for the Truth, that was held uh, on December 4th on the platform of Creative Society. In this conference, truthful scientists, experts in fields of climatology, of economy, ecology, expressed touching information about the crisis the society is fa facing today. Volunteers who organize the conference in their free time with own resources, together with the guests, with the speakers, came to the conclusion that in order to solve all of these issues, it is essential to unite the potential of all of the people who are indifferent and come up uh, with solutions that would help us mitigate the graduating cataclysms as well as solve the issues of the ecology and economy. The next significant event and strategic or important step for all of humanity will take place on the 7th of May, 2022. The Forum Global Crisis, we are people we want to live. It will be translated into 100 languages. We, the people of 180 countries, will go even deeper into the facts and the truth that is hidden from us. Because we understand that silence and inaction is no longer an option. For when we remain silent, we are supporting the horror of the consumerism format of society. So don't be indifferent. Tell everyone about this forum. Together, in a large-scale unification, we cannot only survive, but we can thrive as civilization, and it's possible only if we build a creative society. Modern collaboratism. Who is playing on the side of the common enemy of humanity? The real cause of global climate changes. Who and why is eating the truth from the people? Climatic disaster through the eyes of eyewitnesses. Refugees, why does it affect everyone? Escalating social violence, slavery, and human trafficking. And most importantly, solution will be discussed at the forum. So if you want to be an information partner and a vital forum, please write to info at creativesociety.com. Thank you. And today with us, we've got our dear guests, Albena Stojanova, healthcare support assistant at uh, NHS UK. Welcome, Albena. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. And Dr. Uh, Muhannad Abdul Kader, a general surgeon, deputy general director for relations and partnership at the Independent Doctors Association in IDA Turkey. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. Great, great to have you both. So, and today we are going to talk about, unfortunately, a heartbreaking topic, which was raised at the conference, refugees, uh, at the conference, so refugees and their destiny in a consumer format of society. But first, um, as you both, our guests, watch the conference on December 4th, uh, we would like to ask you, um, why do you think it's important to bring up, really to bring up the diverse information presented at the conference to people and how important it is to continue the efforts on those different topics by preparing for the next forum that will be held on the 7th of May in order to really provide people with the truth. What is it so important to do this and to spend the time on it? Maybe, Albena, can you start uh, answering this first question? Well, for me, this was a very important event to watch the conference on the 4th of December. Um, I understood many things which I didn't know before the conference. There are new subjects and issues I found out about. Uh, and it is a really amazing thing which was done on the 4th of December because 
many people was involved, many people saw um, what is going on in the world on a large pace. Um, to me, it was significant to find out details about the climate changes. Um, I didn't know that it is something which is happening because of cyclicity, because of universal, uh, how to say, um, it on a universal base. I thought it was a result of our own doing and that's why we had all these ecological problems so to me this conference is an eye-opening event and i'm so thankful and grateful to you guys for organizing it and now feeling part of it i'll be very happy to help and do my best to to be part of the next conference on the 7th of may Thank you very much, Albena. And uh, also, um, uh, Muhannad, uh, can you also share with us, please, uh, why do you think <coughs> that uh, it's uh, vital to raise these sort of uh, uh, topics uh, in today's society? Yeah, uh, what struck me uh, most about the last conference is that uh, previously, almost all other conferences uh, usually uh, were mainly hosted by uh, hosted and discussed among specific countries. Uh, uh, um, um, and so, uh, bringing together a very a vast majority of cultures to uh, participate in these kind of conferences uh, on a very large scale, uh, it was for me it was very inform informative. And as uh, as my colleague said. Uh, I heard a lot of, of things that I, I, I wasn't aware of before uh, during this conference. Uh, and it is very important that uh, <clears throat> most of the countries were uh, uh, participating in this co conference so they can at least uh, pass this information among their countries and their uh, peers and their uh, people also. So, yes, back to you. Great, thank you for your answer. And, and in it, you're very right. Uh, the conference uh, was held in uh, by so many people from so many different countries, and it really illustrates also and what we're going to discuss a little bit later: the creative society and uh, the purpose of this unification. It's not a matter; it's not a problem just for one country, for one nation. It's a problem that we need to solve all of us all together. And I think this conference was indeed a very well illustration about this unity already of so many different countries on those topics, which is nothing but the truth. So thank you very much for your answer. And uh, actually let's dive into a more specific of these topics that we uh, heard about the, during the conference about refugees. Um, participants of the Creative Society gathered uh, the information and presented a documentary about it, about this topic of refugee for the first time during the previous conference. So the full documentary, you can watch it on the channel. And today we're just going to watch a small part of it, but illustrating the full content. Why is there such inhuman treatment of people? I was thinking about it and decided to figure it out. You will never spend a month without being attacked with a xenophobic, xenophobic attack before they say, as a foreigner, you are stealing their work. I've lost that hope of uh, 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 being in the great society. I, I don't know, I've lost that hope because seeing the way that people are being killed, seeing the way that people are being shot in my eyes. A child can be sold many times. I remember one day I came across the story of a girl who was, um, she was Turkish. She had been sold 17 times, 17 times. And she had been trafficked from one country to another 17 times and she had experienced only rape i also said uh, in many auctions as a customer as an undercover when i was 
doing under the world. There were, we were uh, sitting for the options. Nine year old girl, 10 year old girl, as per the demand. So uh, the, the trade called the first time sex. So whenever the auctions will happen, new girls arrive in the trade. So they put the auctions. So who will bid the last demand, the uh, money? That person only will uh, means, uh, use that victim full night for his choice. The business that is made of spare parts, the human spare parts. How many children have been transferred from one place to another and then been uh, operated on for some rich guys in different parts of the world to get a kidney or get something else from their bodies against their will? Black market traffickers mafia is part of this economy that uh, is uh, ruling the world so what else i can say that uh, i i only see that the other possibility is to uh, spend money instead of constructing walls uh, like we are doing in europe in our society human life has no value how is it possible that instead of help, people encounter violence, aggression, abuse, and slavery? This is not a migration crisis, but this is a crisis of humaneness. People, uh, uh, by looking at the existing legal frame, will not ever be entitled asking for protection. Because you will ask them which, which country you're coming from, they will say there is no country. I had a country called X, but the country now is underwater or I had a village and this village is being totally destroyed or disappearing. It turns out that there are still no effective programs for the resettlement of refugees. For so many years the United Nations has been working. For so many years the Refugee Rights Commission has been working. So many humanitarian organizations and NGOs around the world have been working, but there are no working established or adopted programs on how to work with these refugees. There are none. And the Refugee Commission itself admits this. Now refugees are forced to leave their homes. They face condemnation and cruelty. They are left alone with their misfortune because of the consumerist format of society. Tomorrow's climate catastrophes could be upon us as well. Answer yourself honestly. Are you ready to face what refugees face? Are you sure you won't be in their shoes? That you and your loved ones won't have to go through what they're going through. Yes, what we've uh, just seen is uh, a bitter truth um, that is a consequence of the consumer format of society in which uh, money is about human life. And this bitter truth is unfortunately not really presented in the media today. And a lot of people are either not aware of it or are shutting their eyes over it, not realizing that as a result of uh, the climate events, uh, any one of us can become uh, a refugee at any moment. Uh, so the next question uh, I would like to ask um, Albena is, uh, uh, why do you think that uh, these horrible things uh, happened? Why do we as uh, people in this modern society allow this uh, to exist? Well, I wish I can answer this question. Um, yes, as you said, um, our society at the moment, as a current consumer society, the value of the money stays well above the value of people's lives. And anything which serves the money and the power is allowed. So I personally think that it is a big shame for us as a humanity in the 21st century not to value human life as the most valuable thing we've got here on the planet. Uh, and I definitely don't think 
that the way it is done at the moment is the right way. So I don't know why it is happening, maybe because we didn't do much enough to change it. Maybe that's the time to start giving our voice and 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 expressing our will all these to be changed because at the end of the day we are here to learn being good people and to learn being and living together and being kind to each other and and develop this kindness in every each of us maybe Thank you. Thank you for your answer. And I think you are spot on mentioning the fact that indeed in our current social society, unfortunately, why is those horrible things happen? It's simply because money prevail above a human being, which means that people will do anything to get money and to abuse other people. And what is the easiest way to abuse the weaker one, the refugees? Um, so following your answers, Albina, I wanted to turn to uh, Moana and uh, ask him uh, a little bit similar question, but also regarding people. So we talked about the fact that they kind of let these things happen, but how do you think, how well informed do you think people are about the refugee situation and its consequences? Do you think that uh, there is maybe something here to, to think of and to, to discuss? Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, let me express my, uh, my shock. My, my shock. Uh, it is very uh, horrifying to hear this report that you presented. Uh, I saw it, but again, it's very horrifying uh, to hear also such sto stories about human trafficking, especially with children. Actually, not just children, everybody else. It doesn't matter if children or adults, because human trafficking is human trafficking, period. As, as uh, Albina said, in, uh, consumer, in consumer society, nothing is more valuable than materials, money, which is really annoying because uh, what makes money, what makes material is the human being. So if we, can, if, if we could consider human being as assets that we should preserve, we will generate more money, of course, because money doesn't generate itself. Materials that, that don't generate self. Human being generates them. So we have to preserve them. Uh, are the people aware of this? I think it depends on the uh, society that the refugee, uh, refugees come from. So if we consider ourselves, everybody on this planet are equal, are the same, we shed the same blood, which is red, nobody is bleeding uh, blue, maybe we can understand that refugee crisis everywhere is the same. It's not about race, it's not about color, it's not about the origin, uh, the ethnicity, the, the religion, uh, uh, the origin of, of birth, no. It's about a human being. That's it. Yes, you are. And, 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 I, and I am a refugee myself, by the way. You are absolutely right, and um, you speak like someone who has uh, <clears throat> who's had a personal experience about this, you know, about all of these horrible things that are happening uh, to the people, you know, and uh, with, uh, as we've heard in the conference, uh, with the uh, peaking uh, cataclysms, um, we probably will face a lot more refugees uh, all around the world uh, migrating. Uh, for which we unfortunately are not uh, prepared today, you know. And uh, we can see also, as you've uh, pointed out very correctly, uh, the topic of refugees and also climate uh, crisis does not know any border, you know. If a disaster happens, it does, not, uh, it does not ask for permission to enter a country, you know. Uh, it does not ask for permission to destroy anyone's uh, house, regardless of the social status. And uh, due to the fact that uh, we live in a consumer format of society where we are being imposed that the resources are limited, um, where, as already mentioned, uh, money is over human life, uh, we are facing, uh, you know, this issue. And uh, 
in creative society, this uh, couldn't happen because uh, in creative society, uh, we are able to uh, unite scientific potential. We are able to come up, we are able to free up time of the scientists to come up uh, with technologies based on which we can, uh, for example, uh, we can, for example, uh, warn people in advance of any, let's say, cataclysmic event so that they could be evacuated um, uh, right on time before the cataclysm happens. And this would uh, save actually uh, human lives, you know. So, uh, but maybe you could also share with us your experience as you said that you are also a refugee. Uh. Which part of my experience uh, of my experience as a refugee you want me to share? Because there is a lot of things that there is a whole back sto background story, a lot of stories actually. I, I am double refugee. Refugee. I uh, I traveled from uh, uh, Turkey to Germany, and then I traveled back, and now I am refugee in Germany. So I was refugee in Germany. Uh, uh, sorry, now I am refugee in Turkey. So I was refugee in Germany, and now I am a refugee. In Turkey, and both have stories uh, behind this. Uh, so maybe, yeah. So maybe the impact of the current consumer format of society on uh, on on, the, on your life, on your staying there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's a, it has a very great impact. Uh, uh, when when I was, for example, when I was in in Germany as a refugee, uh, I noticed that. Being a refugee, having this uh, allowance, uh, unemployed, uh, unemployed uh, allowance, uh, it ma it makes people look at you totally differently. They will not interact with you uh, on the human being level as much as okay. A lot of them actually, uh, they were looking at you uh, at us. Uh, okay, you are having uh, the allowance from our uh, uh, taxes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, little they knew that we didn't want that. We want to be a productive member of the society, start working as fast as we can, so we can participate in their society. The same here in Turkey, actually. It is uh, exactly the same in this, in this uh, point of view, in this uh, angle. They, they are looking at the Syrian refugee in Turkey that, okay, they are consuming the resources of the Turkish government, on the country, they don't. They are participating in the Turkish eco uh, economy. Uh, uh, just a little few, they are uh, having aid from the Turkish uh, uh, <clears throat> authority, which in the, f from the report of the Turkish authorities, uh, less than 100,000 people are getting uh, assistance from uh, Turkish Red Crescent, for example. The rest of the uh, refugees are working uh, producing money, contributing to the Turkish uh, society. Uh, on psychological level, yeah, it's affecting every refugee in some, uh, in somehow. Uh, a lot of them, they don't know how to cope. Uh, you hear about fights, about some kind of uh, a struggle between two societies. Uh, the 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 reason behind this is the uh, psychosocial effect, psychosocial uh, impact about being refugee. It's not something else. Yes, indeed. Mm. Thank you for your for your answer and for your for your experience firsthand on on being a refugee. And I think you 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 mentioned the fact that uh, it's very difficult for a refugee to. Uh, integrate into those new places that they are going. I mean, most of them, or, or a vast majority of them, or many of them, actually don't decide on going anywhere else. Uh, they wish they could actually stay where they were, in their homeland, as you were mentioning, where they could work, they could build a family, but they are forced, either because of war, because of climate disasters, uh, they have to move somewhere else. And where they are going it's almost sometimes even worse than the place they are living. Um, and, and this is indeed, once again, the illustration of the consumer format of society, which is in total opposition of the creative society, where we are here for today, 
to talk about and to talk about this implementation and what the implementation of the creative society will help. Uh, because this society is simply a creative society is simply a society where you will not be afraid to become a refugee uh, and meet those horrible, horrible things that we currently see and we saw in this documentary. Um, to tell a bit more about the Creative Society, it's all about eight foundation. Uh, it's been 10 years that uh, the Creative Society project and people in this project have been interviewing millions of people and asking them a simple question, in which society would you like to live in to be happy? And out of those millions of interviews, um, we came up with those uh, eight foundations that are very simple and build really the foundation of what should be a society. And yes, by implementing eight foundation in a country, uh, in all countries, all over the world, we can do it. I mean, these foundations are formed by those people and so for more than 180 countries. This is not foundation created by one country that other people will not understand. It's a human answer. Uh, it's not a country, it's not a race, it's not a, a region who created those, those foundations. It's, it's a human, it's humanness who created those, those foundations. Uh, so it shows it show what people, regardless, regardless of their nationality, social status, religion, and so on, can come up with. It took more than 10 years so then to come to this amazing poll and all over the world uh, and, and gather this one single truth of what, what people really want. And unity will bring us there. But before implementing it all over the world, people need to know about it. Uh, millions of people already know, uh, but we are billions on this planet. And, as, um, and we as people need to make a request from the society to implement these foundations of creative society only in a peaceful and evolutionary way. Uh, and it can happen when all people could know about the creative society. And first of all, we all need to understand that creative society is beneficial for all of us. So in order to understand even more this concept of creative society, let's watch a short video about what is the best investment as of today.
Well, creative society to me is something which all we would like to have in our lives. I mean, every each of us, when we speak from the bottom of our hearts here where the love is, every each of us, when we speak about the ideal place to live, we talk about something which is very, very similar to the creative society as it is explained in the eight foundations. Um, so when, when we speak about it, we, we, can, we can see people's love, people's help to each other. Um, creative society is a, a way of society where people live together and they look after not themselves, but all together at the same time. Um, the care is on a different level, extremely higher level than, than what we've got at the moment. At the moment, although it says in the paperwork that um, the approach to everybody should be individual, um, in the best way possible, and, and all these things we read in the books, the reality is completely different. Uh, there is, I can see age discrimination, uh, I can see very judgmental people in the system, uh, which, which I think for the 21st century is not is not the right way to look at the others. Um, I've heard many, many times somebody says, well, I don't feel well because, and that's going wrong and that's going wrong. And the answer is, well, that's because of your age. It's age related. So it is like, like a keyword for, I'm not gonna look into it because you're at a certain age. Or it's just an example. Information level, we know from the mass media how much we help these people. Do we really in practice? Uh, also, again, I came across, I've come across many times to the system cannot. Um, take the pressure of the time we live in. I mean, the system is struggling to, to meet all the needs of every person. So very often, some people who are even not qualified take a decision, I'll, I'll put more attention into this person, and I'll put less attention into this person. It's not equal, definitely not. So to avoid all this, I can only see it in a society which is like a creative society when everybody is equal, when we fight for everybody's life in the same way and everybody gets the same attention from every service. Because I've seen also how one service is um, possible for some patients, and if they want um, to have better service, they need to pay for it. So we go for the value of money again, which means that if somebody is rich, they can afford having better service, and if they're not, they're just left on the basic service. And, and again, isn't it a kind of a discrimination as well? But what I wanted to say while I was watching the film, I just felt as if, because you mentioned in the, in the video that um, the idea of the creative society was created by people. And I was thinking, if we look at the children, even when we were talking about the refugees, if this was happening into a children's society, 
they would have welcomed every new person with such enthusiasm, with such being ready to help, with such, with everything we've lost because of the, uh, this consumer way of thinking. And uh, I also wanted to say that because we live in a consumer society and day by day we just start accepting it and sometimes at some point the things which are basically not normal, we see them normal, which is a little bit frightening because we just get to a point we lose our empathy to people at some if i can call it like that so i personally i just want to look at the children and always imagine how would a child three years old would or five years old would would react on these things and this being a help for everyone without even knowing who they are i think it's extremely important to develop again, to redevelop in our in our minds. So that's why I totally, totally support the Aid Foundation of the Creative Society. I was a teacher before, and I can talk about the foundation, which is about the equality in uh, education. It is the same in our consumer society. Uh, children who whose parents got more money they can afford better education and children who does not have this they just go to ordinary schools and the ordinary schools are not always the best ones they give you a basic but we we lose we lose all these things uh, which a child can develop if they are in in a place where they can learn better and have better teachers. So, yeah, there are so many things which the creative society can benefit every single life. Just to be honest, I just can't wait to live there. Thank you very much for your for your answer and I, I really like the way that you 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 put in perspective that it seems that people lost something they, they lost this empathy this this humanness uh, because at the end we talk about creative society but it's not something that's going to come to us by itself it's something that we need to build and in order to build it we need to also maybe change ourselves change ourselves from this uh, consumer society that we are so uh, 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 used to and and get outside of our comfort zone to actually get into an even better comfort zone which is creative society so i really like this idea of, of changing ourselves first and going back and, and indeed looking at children and the way they interact with each other we can learn a lot from them so thank you very much for this uh, for this answer um i would like to ask uh, also another question to my um because indeed Creating this creative society seems to be a, a really a no-brainer. Everybody wants it, and especially as soon as you understand it. But how can we spread uh, to the world about the creative society? Because that's the first stage of the creative society. The first stage of the creation of this creative society is to spread the words to every single person on earth for them to know that this is the answer to all of our crisis. So how can we spread this word in the shortest possible way, because we understand that we also don't necessarily have much time uh, to all of the people? What is what each of the person roles in this? Can you tell us more about this, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Albina. You uh, elaborated a lot of uh, on uh, on a lot of very, very uh, important and wonderful points, actually. Uh, which a lot of them uh, personally t touched me. Uh, back to your question, I think uh, if uh, creative society wants to uh, widen its wings, uh, it should hit the, uh, the big media very hard. Well, what I mean by that, uh, in somehow creative society should dominate uh, big media 
so they can spread this message to all the world. Because let's face it, we are uh, we all are living in in a consumer society. A lot of almost everybody is depending on a big media to get their information from. And the big media is manipulating the information that we are getting according to political agendas or other kind of agendas, whatever. But yeah, they do. Uh, up till now, they are telling that, okay, for the clean energy, we want to do or conduct or build this project, which in reverse, we uh, will get more harm than benefit from this project. I was talking with uh, my colleagues uh, from uh, uh, Creative Society before about that. I heard this report on the media about this big, big project in Morocco that will uh, depend on the uh, solar system to generate electricity and provide all Europe about, about uh, electricity uh, with electricity. And one of our uh, friends uh, told me uh, that's not the truth and provided me with another uh, uh, media production about the truth about this project, which will pollute the uh, uh, planet. So this is one of the most important things. This, this round table, this discussion is part of this uh, media um, spreading the, the truth, but it should go to the next level reaching uh, the, uh, the big agencies that can really influence people or uh, maybe in parallel build a new media agency that can really reach out to a lot of people and tell them the truth because this is the, the, the slogan of this uh, conference, telling the truth. And this is the truth. This is really the truth. Thank you, Mohanad. It's very inspiring. And indeed, actually, there are already today tens uh, of thousands, hundreds of thousands of uh, volunteers all around the world uh, utilizing all of these new technologies in order to spread the message about uh, creative society, either by conducting uh, interviews like this or doing streams or writing us articles, posting information about the conferences and stuff like that. So. This is, this is already happening and uh, the more people will join us and uh, we can see that you've already took your active part just, ju just by joining this uh, international discussion. Uh, the sooner uh, we will be living in a creative society. And so um, I would like to thank you very much uh, for your uh, honest uh, words, for all of the experience that you have shared before we, um, before we end our uh, international discussion, I would just like to ask whether he, there is anything that you would like to share as some last word uh, with uh, our viewers today. Albina. Uh... Okay, uh, I would like to share something. Um, it is my experience from, I think I was 10 years of age. Um, and it was, well, when I was in the primary school in Bulgaria, we used to have um, a kind of a tradition. When you finish primary school, you have uh, like books we write with some questionnaire and you give it to your friends and they answer the questions. It was called lexicon. Uh, maybe different people in different worlds got these questionnaires in some other places, but this is what I grew up with. And at that time, a friend of mine wrote something which I never forgotten. It was a thought from a kind of, um, let's say, very famous person, but I don't remember the name. And the thought was, impossible is only what you cannot imagine. It, it's just, I couldn't understand it when I was 10 years of age. And I, it stayed in my mind all my life. And I was trying to know how come 
the only impossible thing is the thing which I cannot imagine. Uh, when I came across some books and in a later life, I understood that there are no boundaries and there is no such thing like impossible. It is all us who um, make it impossible because we put the boundaries onto it. So what I, want, I wanted to share that knowledge that everything is possible. It is only important we believe in it and we, we know it is possible to happen. So something like it is too good to be true, that's not true really. And yes, everything is possible. Um, and I would like to be part of the creative society because that's the best chance for the whole humanity, I believe. So people just believe in everything we can do we can we can do everything we can imagine that's all i wanted to thank say thank you very much thank you and Ponat? yeah actually <laughs> uh albina you, you you are really sentimental and you touch us our hearts uh, what i want what i want to say uh, is um if the idea of the creative society really applies, uh, people will s we, will start to care for each other more and more. You know, this will create a an army of volunteers in all sectors. And coming from uh, uh, health background as Albina, we will see a lot of people uh, who will be uh, volunteering in the health sector, helping the elderly, helping the uh, the patients. It's all about solidarity. What Albina said, it's all about solidarity. If we stand in solidarity with each other as human being, I, I, th I think we can achieve a lot, a lot of goals. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your last uh, words, both of you, indeed very inspiring and, uh, and really coming from the, the bottom of your hearts, that's for sure. So yes, dear viewers, uh, right now is the right um, to stop being silent, like both of our guests today have been. Take this responsibility and become a true hero who stands with creative society and all of humanity. Share this information with everyone you know. And share vital information about the upcoming forum, Global Crisis. We are people and we want to live. Also, if you want to be an international partner, you can write to info at creativesociety.com. Now you can take easy but so much important actions by spreading this information in all of the social media, all platforms you know. This information saves people's lives. Let's make this forum stream everywhere. Thank you all. Thank you to our guests. Thank you to host. And see you into the next international discussions. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you very much.